the beautiful music when you came walking in. Jasmine Stewart and Emma Nyman, where she was going to go. Stand up. There you go. Fourth <laughs> graders and Mrs. Clay's class. And I asked Jasmine and Emma how long they've been playing. And share with everybody, Jasmine, how long have you been playing the violin? Four months. Okay, if any of you have ever tried to play the violin, and many, many years ago I did, I didn't sound like that at all. So, way to go after four months of practicing clearly really hard. And Emma, how long have you been playing piano? Three years. Three years. So, how often do you guys practice? Is it every day? Would you say that, Jasmine? Yeah, yeah, that's what you do when you're perfecting a skill and you have a passion for it. So thank you for sharing your talent with us today. Really nice job, so thank you. They told me it was a surprise this morning. I didn't know I did. So clearly we have a special chapel before us. I don't know who these, these crayons are up here, but I guess we'll find out in a little bit. But next week, friends, is a special week at Montgomery School. Does anybody know what it is? Philip, you, you shot your hand right up. What is it? Grand Friends Day. Oh, it's, that's coming up on Friday. Very good. We do have our Grand Friends. We'll be visiting our campus after a long time, and we haven't been able to have Grand Friends Day. We're so excited about that. Do you know what else it is, George? Oh, there is a... Well, you guys know more than I do. There's a carnival coming up for admissions. Yes, very good. Ava? Say it with me, everybody. Teacher Appreciation Week. Do we love our teachers so much at Montgomery School? Yes. So teachers, could you just cover your ears for one little second? Yeah, cover. I'm not going to talk until I see you all covering your, plugging your ears. Okay. So students, no, students don't plug, don't cover your ears, students. Just teachers. Clay, don't cover your ears. <laughs> so, and cl cl close your eyes, teachers. Okay, they close their eyes, so I don't think their ears are really plugged. <laughs> this is like an evil Simon says. Okay, so students, did you all get your little flowers? Okay, okay. So these are due on Friday. There's a big basket outside my office, and you're writing little messages to your teachers, to as many teachers as you want. And we're gonna decorate this room with your flowers. Okay, you did it, Connor? Good. So will you remember to do that? Do on Friday. There's not a lot of room on here, so fill it up with all the kind words you can think of about your teachers. Will you remember to do that for me? And for your teachers, we love this kind of stuff. These are the treasures, your words. Okay, you have no idea what it means. Okay, so if you're sitting next to your teacher, you can pat them and tell them that they can uncover their ears. Will you give them a little pat? Yeah, we're good teachers. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, so today's chapel is Mrs. Canaan's class. We love Mrs. Canan. Mrs. Canan has been at Montgomery School for nine, is that right, Mrs. Canan, nine years? It's been a long time since I met Mrs. Canan for the first time. She loves her Monty family and the community here at Montgomery School. So I have to share something about Mrs. Canan with you all. When we all left for COVID years ago, distant memory now, right? Uh, we suddenly had to go remote with um, your student learning. Do you all remember that? You were suddenly like learning from your computers and it's so good that we're back, I know. But I have to tell you, Mrs. Canan was a quick leader amongst our faculty and she really helped us to come up with a way for our learning to happen creatively. And I was so appreciative of the work that she put in. We worked over spring break, do you remember that, Mrs. Canan? And trying to put it all together but she was a tremendous leader in that, and that is a gift of hers, that technology, and just, she wraps her mind around something brilliantly, and I'm really appreciative of her leadership amongst us all uh, with that. But she loves her students. How proud is she of you when you learn something new? Does she just go crazy? Yeah, yeah, she does. She's so excited when she sees your learning happening, and I know you've learned so much in second grade this year, 
And now, this is Mrs. Command's class, right? Because I can't really tell who you are. You're all little crayons today. So, very excited to introduce Mrs. Canan's class for chapel today. Duncan and his crowns were happily coloring together when a strange stack of postcards arrived for him in the mail. Dear Duncan, not sure if you remember me. My name is Maroon Crayon. You only cuddled with me once to draw a scam, but whatever. And you, well, you lost me two years ago in the camp. Then your dad sat on me and broke me in half. I never would have survived her paperclip not asked me back to help him find a battle. So can you come get me and can paperclip come too? He's really holding me together. Well, sincerely, your maroon's crayon, maroon crayon. <laughs> Dear Duncan, no one likes peace. Eh, no one even likes the color pea green. So I'm changing my name and running away to see the mouth that Sally has the mouth. Oh, oh, never sold. Hi, Duncan, it's me, Neon Red Crayon. Re remember that great vacation we had with your family? Remember how we laughed when we drew a picture of your dad's sunburn? Remember dropping me by the hotel pool when you left? Clearly you do not, because I'm still here. Anyways, after eight months waiting for you to come get me, I guess I'm walking back. Your left behind friend, Neon Red Crayon. Duncan. It's us. Yellow and orange. We know we used to argue over which of us was the color of the sun. But guess what? Neither of us wants to be the color of the sun anymore. Not since we were left outside and the sun melted us together. together. You know the real color of the sun. Hat! That's what. We're sorry for arguing. You can make green the sun for all we care. Just bring us home. You're not so sunny friends, yellow and orange. Hey, Duncan, I'm sure you don't recognize me after the horrors I've been through. I think I was tan crayon or maybe red sienna. I don't know. I can't tell anymore. Have you ever been eaten by a dog and puked up on the living room rug? I have. I have, Duncan. I have been eaten by a dog and puked up on the living room rug. It is not pretty. Not pretty at all. I have more carpet clothes than Gran now. Could you please bring your, uh, yeah, your undigestible friend, Tan or possibly Red Sienna? Here's Duncan. Um, could you please open the front door for me? I still need to see the world to tell you I the world of salt. <laughs> hey, Duncan, remember last Halloween we told your little brother there was a ghost under the basement stairs? <laughs> then we drew that scary stuff on the wall. Sure was funny when he ran screaming, right? But it wasn't so funny when you forgot to take me out of the basement. Please come get me. I'm kind of terribly horrified. You scared Fred to go on the door crayon. Duncan, looks like I'm almost home. Been through China, Canada, and France, I think. Just crossing New Jersey by a camel now. New Jersey has giant pyramids, right? See you soon, neon red. Wait, no. Next stop, oh, wait, sincerely, neon red crayon, P.S. Next stop, North Pole, I think. Hey, 
Dear Dun Duncan, does Paige in a Pirate Island ring a bell? Kind of a big payday for Captain Greenbeard. There. Also no silver or bronze on pile, huh? I told you to call them. <laughs> I. Sincerely, your pointless friend, Gold Tran. Dear Duncan, I've seen the one now, it's rainy, I'm coming back now. So it's early, uh, 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 no, so Hi Duncan, you're probably wondering why my head is stuck in your sock. A question I ask myself every day. Well, it's because last week you left me in your pocket and I ended up in the dryer. I landed on your sock and now he's stuck to my head. Can you please come and get me? Also, why does everything in the world still smell even after it's been washed? Your stinky, socky, sock on the head buddy. Turquoise crown. P.S. Sock says hi. Dear Mr. Duncan, I know I'm not your crown. I know I belong to your baby brother, but I can't take him anymore. In the last week alone, he's bitten the top of my head off, put me in the cat's nose, thrown on the wall with me, and tried to color garbage with me. Worst of all, he's a terrible artist. I can't tell what he's drawn. Donkeys, monkeys, donkey monkeys. Kasha said every child is an artist, but I don't know. I don't think he met your baby brother. Please rescue me, your desperate prime big chunky, big chunky toddler cry. Greetings from the Amazon rainforest, making great time. I think I'm almost home. Sincerely, in neon red crayon. Hello, Duncan. It's me, Brown Crane. You know exactly what I want to say, buddy. Everyone thinks they get all the great coloring jobs, candy bars, puppies, ponies. Lucky me, right? But they don't know what you use me to color, do they? I didn't think so. The rest of that coloring was great, but it really need a final brown scribble. I'll come back, but please, let's stick to candy bars, okay? And very embarrassed friend, Brown Crane. <laughs> Duncan was sad to learn all the crayons he lost, forgotten, broken, and neglected over the years, so he ran around gathering them up. But Duncan's crayons were all so damaged and differently shaped than they used to be that they no longer fit in the crayon box, so he had an idea. He cut, he taped, he built a place where each crayon would always feel at home. And in Cleveland, I got to visit the Sydney Opera House. 